all equations are like a seesaw. And what I mean by a seesaw is that thing at the playground that you see that's got like a, a piece of wood and some balance point in the center, right? And what you end up having is one person, um, here I'm going to draw a box, on this side of the seesaw, and you have another person on the other side of the seesaw. Now, if the distance between here and here is the same as the distance here, in other words, if the thing is balanced, okay, and if you put a person over on this side, or a box, let's call it a box, and then you put a person on this side of the same size, same weight, everything is the same, person over here or object over here is the same weight on both sides, what's going to happen? Well, that seesaw is going to remain balanced, okay? And so you all, you all know that because you played in the playground. And then if you go and stack something else on top, like maybe another box on top here, and you stack something exactly the same size and weight on the other side, as long as you continue stacking objects that are the same weight on both sides in the same position from here to the pivot point, then the seesaw, the teeter-totter, whatever you want to call it, remains balanced. Okay, so you can basically do anything you want to both sides of the seesaw as long as you're doing it the same thing to both sides and then that seesaw remains balanced. The reason I keep saying this is because equations are basically the same thing. So for instance, let's take a really simple equation. x plus 2 is equal to 9. That's a really simple equation, right? Because what you're basically saying is you have some unknown value we call x and you're going to add to it the number 2. And whatever that is, the answer should be 9. Okay, So you need to, to look at equations and start thinking, what is the value of x? How do I find the value of x that satisfies this equation? Now this is a really, really simple equation. So you all know that there's really only one value of x I can put in here, so that when I add the number 2 to it, I'm going to get 9. And the value of x here is 7. Of course, if you put 7 in here, I'm going to add 2, and that's going to give me 9, so it's, it works. If you put any other value of x in here, it doesn't work at all. Okay, but this is a really simple equation, so we're going to start learning how to solve these things um, methodically so that if you get more complicated equations, you're not going to be able to just look at it and figure out what the answer is. You're going to need to do these steps. So why did I spend the time drawing this over here? It's because this equation has an equal sign, and this equal sign is kind of like the balance point here. What it's saying here is that everything on the left of this equation is equivalent to or balanced with everything on the right side of this equation. So the number one thing you need to remember about equations is just like the seesaw here. You can add or subtract anything you want to the left side of this equation as long as you also do it to the right hand side of this equation. So if I add something to the left and I also add the same thing to the right, or if I subtract the same thing from the left and the right, then this equation might start to look different, but it's going to remain balanced. It's going to basically be balanced like this guy is. So let's, let's take an example. Let's just continue down the road here. Let's say that I'm going to take the x plus 2 on the left, and I'm going to add 1 on the left-hand side. Now, if I'm going to do that, then algebra tells me the rule I'm trying to teach you is you have to do it to both sides. Do you see how the x plus 2 is just from here, and the 9 is from here? All I did was I added 1 to the left, and I add 1 to the right. And I'm telling you that as long as you do the same thing to the left and to the right, then this equation remains balanced and it remains valid. So on the left hand side, what you're going to end up having is you're going to have x plus 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3 and on the right hand side 9 plus 1 is 10. Now what am, why am I doing this? Why am I showing you this? Because what I'm trying to impress upon you is that all I did was add 1 to both sides. This equation that looks very different than this one actually has the same solution. x plus 2 is 10. What's the value of x? Well, x must be 7. x plus three, I'm sorry, x plus 2 is 9. x must, must be 7. x plus 3, um, what is the value of x to make it equal to 10 here? Well, it has to be the same number, 7. So these equations, even though they look different, they have exactly the same solution and they represent the same thing. All I did was add 1 to both sides. That's a really important lesson for you to understand, that you, you have freedom to do what you want. For instance, if I want to go crazy, x plus 2 is on the left and equal to 9 on the right. That's the original equation. What if I wanted to do something crazy and add 7 on the left? Well, in order to make it balanced, I have to also add 7 on the right. So on the left, it will be x plus 9 is equal to 9 plus 7 gives you 16. So what I'm basically saying is that these two equations, this one looks very different than this one, but they really represent the same thing because as long as I add the same thing to both sides, 
I have um, basically kept the thing balanced. All right, let's just do another real quick one here. We'll just kind of crank through here. What if I had x plus 2 equals 9? That's the original equation. I can also subtract anything I want from both sides. I subtract 1 from the left. I must subtract 1 from the right. So on the left, I'll have x plus 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1, equals 9 minus 1 is 8. x plus 1 is equal to 8. This equation is the same, represents the same thing as this equation, which also represents the same thing as this equation, which also represents the same thing as this equation. Okay, we'll just kind of crank through here a little bit. And then finally, if I have x plus 2 is equal to 9, I can do anything I want, right? So let me subtract 2 from the left, and I'll subtract 2 from the right. Now this is an interesting case, because on the left, what do I have? The, um, the 2 minus 2 gives me 0, right? So this guy just gives me 0. So on the left, what I have is x plus 0, I'm not going to write it down, is equal to, and on the right I have 9 minus 2, and that gives me 7. Now look at this one. This one looks a little bit different. See, here we added something to the left and the right, we got kind of another equation. Here we added something to the left and right, we got another equation. They're all the equivalent, but we got sort of an equation-looking thing. Same thing here. Here we did something where we subtracted 2 from both sides, but we got x is equal to 7. What this is telling you is x, the unknown value, is actually equal to 7. So we've solved this equation. The answer to this equation is 7, right? And no matter which version of this equation you look at, the answer is always going to be 7. Look, if you put 7 in here, you get 9, which checks out. If you put 7 in here, plus 3 gives you 10. That's correct. If you put 7 plus 9 in here, that gives you 16. That checks out. If you put 7 in here, plus 1 gives you 8. So see, I told you all these equations were exactly the same, and they are. So why did this work? Basically, in order, we're going to kind of cut to the punchline now. In order to solve equations that involve simple things like addition and subtraction like there, you always want to do the opposite. So the original equation that we started with was x plus 2 is equal to 9, right? So let me write that kind of over again here. We started with x plus 2 is equal to 9, right? And what you want to do is you want to do the opposite thing in order to get x by itself. Basically, in order to solve for x, what you want to do is transform this equation so that x is on the left-hand side of the equal sign by itself, and then whatever's on the right-hand side is just the answer, which is what you're trying to solve for. So in order to get x by itself, you have to do the opposite. And it's very simple because this is addition, x plus 2. That's addition. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. And the opposite of subtraction is addition. So in order to solve simple equations like this with addition and subtraction, to get x by itself, you have to do the opposite thing. So over here, this was adding 2, so all you do is you subtract 2 from both sides, which is what we did. We subtract the 2 from the left, that's going to kill the 2 and get rid of it. And then when we subtract it from the right, that just gives us the answer. So at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is get x by itself on the left, by any means necessary. All right. So that was kind of the long-winded lecture. Now let's solve just one more quick problem in this section to get the hang of it. What if we had the variable t minus 2 is equal to 7. Now remember, we want to get t by itself. That's the unknown value, right? We don't know what t is, but we also know that t has a 2 subtracted from it. So in order to get t by itself, we have to do the opposite. This is subtraction. What is the opposite of subtraction? It's addition. So what we're going to do is we'll have t minus 2 is equal to 7. We can do anything we want to both sides. We choose to add 2 on the left and add 2 on the right. And the reason we do that is because when you have on the left, you'll have negative 2 plus 2, which gives you 0. You all know that now. So on the left, you'll have t by himself is equal to 7 plus 2, which is 9. This is the answer to this equation. There's only one value that works, and if you take this value of 9 and stick it in here, 9 minus 2 does equal 7. So you can always check your answer. Stick it in there and make sure it works. So I'm going to close this lesson down now. We're going to go to the next se section and solve a bunch of, of additional equations to give you practice. But the bottom line, the takeaway I want you to remember, all equations are like a seesaw like this. You can add anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. You can also subtract anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. <clears throat> and the goal that you're trying to do is to get x by himself. So basically you want to do the opposite to kill any numbers that are next, next to x. In this case, it was adding, so we did a subtraction to get rid of this number. 
In this case, it was a subtraction, so we actually added the same number to both sides to get it by itself. And that's what you're going to do for every single one of these problems. So follow me on to the next section. Make sure you understand these. Follow me on to the next section, and we'll do some more practice with solving these single step equations with addition and subtraction in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.